text I was reading the Maktab, one or two points just to make sure. Sometimes the Ahl Bayt would speak in a language so that the common lay person would understand. Because if they, if they didn't speak in that language, the impressions may have become faded over time and it, history would have lost all record of it. So sometimes they stress that aspect. Sometimes they, they speak in a language between them and Allah, like Lady Zainab salam, saying, I, I see nothing but beauty. That's a very high Irfani state that she's saying this. And the common lay people may not understand it. Sometimes they come and speak a phrase of cursing, say, may Allah cut your right hand or may Allah make you die of thirst. Since Imam Hussein, the Ahl Bayt, their words are Allah's words, this is Allah speaking. This is Allah decreeing their punishment, telling them what's going to happen. They're not speaking out of any revenge or anything. They're just telling what is to happen. They're speaking Allah's words. Okay. So it was time to bid farewell. Then Imam Hussein's attention was directed to his daughter, Sakina. He observed that she was at a distance, separate from the other fam female family members. She had situated herself in a corner, standing and weeping. So he approached her, showed her empathy, and encouraged her to be patient and endure the circumstances. The Imam said, Time to bid farewell has arrived, my dear one. And as for our reunion, it'll be beside the Kothar pool on the day of resurrection. So abandon your lamentations and prepare yourselves for captivity. Execute patience and calm, for lamentations are to follow soon. And when you see my body lying on the earth, slain into pieces, with blood coming out from my vessels, have patience. Whilst Imam Hussein was busy comforting the female members of his family, Omar ibn Sa'd addressed his soldiers, exclaiming, Weihakum, ihjimu alay ma dama mashghulan binafsi wa hurame. Wallah in faragalakum la tamtazo me manatakum and me seractacum. Woe upon you! What are you waiting for? Attack him whilst he's occupied with himself and his family. I swear by Allah, once he diverts his attention from them, you'll no longer be able to differentiate between your right and left arms. After the order was given by Omar ibn Sa'd, the enemy started firing their arrows towards the Imam. The arrows were flying at all sides of the camp. One of the arrows had made contact with one of the women's veils. On observing such a scene, the women were horrified and took refuge inside the tents. What is Hussein going to do all alone? They wondered in, in fright. How is he going to react? Imam Hussein, son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, charged fearlessly towards the nearest circuit of soldiers, defeating his opponents accordingly. During the combating, the arrows were relentlessly being fired from all directions, seeking Hussein as their target. These arrows would make contact with the holy Imam's chest and throat areas. The Imam decided to retract his original position, continuously invoking Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al -azim. The Imam was becoming increasingly thirsty. The severity of the thirst must have been incomprehensible for him to have asked for some water. They had blocked their access to the Euphrates. 
Shem replied to the Imam's request in the following manner. La tadhuquhu hatta tarid nar You will not taste it until you enter the fire. Someone from the Kufan army then shouted out in mockery, Ya Hussein, Ala tara al-furat ka annahu butun al-hiyat fala tashrib min hatta tamut atasha O Hussein, see the water of the Euphrates. It's wavy like the inside of snakes. You are not to drink from it until you die of thirst. The Imam then cursed him, saying, Allahumma amit wa atasha. O Allah, make him die in a state of thirst. At this time, whilst the Imam was still standing, Abu al-Hutuf al-Ju'fi hit the Imam's forehead with an arrow. The Imam took out the arrow's shaft from his holy forehead, whereupon blood started to discharge. His face and beard were now soaked in blood. Imam Hussein called out to Allah, Allahumma inna katara ma ana fi min ibadika ha ula il usat. O oh Allah, you are witness to what these rebellious slaves of yours are doing to me. Allahumma ahassahum adada, afflict them with disunity. Waqtuluhum badada, kill them with disgrace. Wala tather ala al ard minhum ahada. Don't leave any of them on earth. Wala taqfiru lahum abada. And don't ever forgive them. Then the Imam announced to the enemy with a loud voice, Ya Ummat Asu, O evil Ummah, Bit Sama Khalaftum Muhammada fi itrati. Indeed, you have poorly mistreated the Prophet's household. Ama inna kum la taqtuluna rajulan fatuhabuna qatla. After killing me, you. You'll fear no one's murder any longer. Bal yuhawwinu alaykum dhalika in the qatlikum iyyai. For killing me has been treated lightly by you all. Wa ayman la inni la arju ayyukriman Allah bis shahada. By Allah, I hope that He dignifies me with martyrdom. ثُمَّ يَنْتَغِمُوا وَلِي مِنْكُمْ مِنْ هَيْثُ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And then for Allah to take revenge on you for the spilling of my blood. Someone then sarcastically interjected saying, بِمَا يَنْتَغِمُ لَكَ مِنَّا يَبْنَ فَاطِمَ O son of Fatima, how will Allah take revenge for you? The Imam replied, سَيُنْغِي بَأْسَكُمْ وَيَسْفِكُ دِمَاءَكُمْ ثُمَّ يَسِيبُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْعَذَابَ الْعَلِيمِ War and discord will arise amongst you, leading you to spill each other's blood on earth. And after that, Allah will assign a chastising punishment upon you. Imam Hussein was standing, his fatigue excruciatingly intensifying, moment after moment. All of a sudden, someone threw a stone, hitting his forehead, covering the imam's face and beard with more blood. He took part of his clothing to wipe the blood from his eyes. Whilst cleaning his eyes, one of the soldiers targeted the imam's heart with a sharp three-headed arrow. فَأَتَاهُ سَحْمٌ مُحَدَّدٌ مَسْمُومٌ The arrow was poison. The Imam cried out loud, Bismillahi wa billah wa ala millati Rasulullah in the name of Allah, with Allah, by the creed of the Messenger of Allah. He then raised his head towards the skies and said, Ilahi, inna kata lamu anna hum yaqtulun, rajulan laysa ala wajh al ard, ibn nabiyyan ghayro, O Allah. They're killing one who, other than him, none of the Prophet's sons exist on earth. He then removed the arrow that had pierced through his body from his back. On removal, blood started pouring down from the place of injury, as if it was pouring down from a downspout. 
he held his two hands together like a cup under the discharge. Once the hands were filled with blood, he threw the blood up into the air and cried, Hawnun alayya ma nazala bihi innahu bi'ayn Allah. This revealed burden is of ease for me, for Allah is seeing it. Not one drop fell back onto the earth. Then he filled his cupped hands once more, and this time he wiped his face and beard with it, exclaiming, Hakadha akunu hatta alqi Allah wa jaddi Rasul Allah wa ana mahdubun bidami wa aqulu qatalani fulanun wa fulanun In such a state like this I want to unite with Allah being soaked in my own blood saying to him X and Y killed me with the constant discharge of blood Hussein became more and more weak over time Eventually he sat down onto the earth. Even sitting wasn't easy for him any longer. He kept falling over. It was during these difficult moments that a man by the name of Malik ibn Nas approached him. Ibn Nas first started blurting out rubbish at the holy Imam, swearing at him, and eventually struck him on the head with his sword. Imam was wearing a robe at the time. As a result of the blow to his holy head, the robe had gradually become soaked in blood. The Imam shouted out, La akalta bi yaminik wa la sharabta. Hasharakallah ma'ad May you never eat or drink with your right hand. May Allah resurrect you with the wrongdoing people. Hani ibn Thubayt al Khadrami narrates. When Hussein was being killed, I was the tenth person to be present at the scene. When Hussein had fallen to the ground, a young male child of his family members, who was wearing a single shirt and a pair of trousers, was fast approaching the holy Imam with a piece of wood in his hand, turning left and right with terror, wondering what's happening. A Kufan horseman had observed this moment, observed the movement of the child and therefore decided to encounter the child. On reaching the young boy, the Kufan struck him on his head, killing him instantly. Some of the comrades of the horseman had inquired as to what was his in incentive. Come on, this was a young boy, was this necessary, they inquired. The Kufan denied it and avoided answering. That boy was Muslim's nephew, Muhammad, son of Abi Sa'id, son of Aqeel, son of Abi Talib. His mother totally bewildered. She witnessed the whole thing, couldn't believe it. After a brief pause, the Kufan horsemen came towards Imam Hussein. The Imam wasn't able to move anymore. They surrounded him. At this time, the 11-year-old Abdullah ibn Hassan had observed that the enemy had encir encircled his uncle, who couldn't get up, let alone retaliate. Abdullah started to make his way forwards towards his isolated uncle Hussein. Lady Zainab tried stopping him, but he adamantly refused. By Allah, I shall not leave my uncle alone. Bah ibn Ka'ab wanted to finish off the Imam. He raised his sword high to strike the Imam one final time. But Abdullah ibn Hassan came in between the Imam and the sword, using his arm as a shield. The sword had descended forcefully, amputating the 11-year-old's arm, which was by now loosely hanging out from his body. You want to kill my uncle, you illegitimate ones. On receiving the blow to the arm, he cried out loud, Ya Amma, O oh uncle, help me. He fell into the Imam's lap, and the Imam embraced Abdullah during his final breaths of life until his death. Hussein comforted him, 
during these final moments, saying, Yabna Achi, Esper Alamo Nazalabik. O son of my brother, O nephew, be patient in relation to the burdens that have come down upon you. Wahtasib fi dalik al khair. See your virtuous fate in this. Fa inna Allah yalhaquka bi abaik al salihin. Allah will join you with your righteous ancestors. He then raised his head, calling out to Allah, Allahumma in matatahum elahin, fa farakhum tafriqa, wajalhum taraiqa qidada. O Allah, you've granted these enemies their way until now. Afflict them with quarrels and disunity. Walla taradal walat anhum abada. Never let their leaders be pleased with them. فَإِنَّهُمْ دَعَوْنَا لَيَنْصُرُونَا ثُمَّ عَدَوْا عَلَيْنَا يُقَاتِلُونَا For they invited us and promised to assist us, but all they did was wage war against us. It was then that Harmala fired an arrow at Abdullah, who was in Hussein's arms, and this led to his martyrdom. Imam had now been on the floor for some time. They could have finished him half, but no one seemed willing at first. The enemy's eyes were haphazardly shifting towards one another, waiting for others to make the final blow. This apparent and open reluctance had frustrated Shim, who shouted out, what are you waiting for? Attack. You can see his crippled with all those arrows and spears in him. Ihmilu alay, charge, finish him off. They attacked from all sides. Ibn Sharik hit the Imam's left shoulder, cutting through it deep. Hasin aimed at the Imam's throat. Another came and continued hitting the Imam's other shoulder. Then Sanan ibn Anas started stabbing and pierced through the Imam's clavicle, driving it through to his chest. And then pierced the Imam's throat with an arrow. And Saleh, son of Wahab, was incessantly stabbing him on his sides. Hilal ibn Nafi narrates I was closely situated to the Imam during all this. By Allah, I swear, I've never seen anyone who's being slain and whose face and head is being soaked in blood look so illuminating and radiant, full of luminosity. The light radiating from his eyes prevented me and made me change my mind in relation to his being slain. It was as if I had forgotten the whole saga. It was then that the Imam had requested for some water. No one present was ready to obey his request. Then a Kufan shouted out, La tadurul ma hatta tarid al hamia, fa tashrib min hamimaha. You're not going to taste water until you enter hell, and then you'll drink from hell's fire. The Imam replied, Ana aridul hamia, I'm going to enter hell. Wa inna ma aridu ala jaddi Rasulullah. I'm going to enter the presence of the Holy Messenger of Allah. And I'll reside in his abode on the throne of truth before an omnipotent sovereign. And I shall complain against you for the things you've done against us. They all became angry. It was as if Allah hadn't assigned any trace of mercy within their hearts. 
and they had nothing left in them, mercy was. Imam started supplicating, Allahumma hkum baynana wa qawmina fa innahum gharruna wa khadaluna wa ghadaru bina wa qataluna O Allah, judge between us and our people. Verily, these people, they misled us, they degraded us, they betrayed us, and they killed us. وَنَحْنُ إِثْرَةُ نَبِيِّكَ وَوُلْدُ حَبِيبِكَ مُحَمَّدَ الَّذِ اسْتَفَيْتَهُ بِالْرِسَالَةِ وَأَتَمَنْتَهُ عَلَى الْوَاهِ فَجْأَلْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا فَرَجَ وَمَخْرَجَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاهِمِينَ O Allah, we are the progeny of your Prophet, the progeny of your beloved one, Muhammad, who you selected for your messengership and who you trusted with your revelation, a sign for us, grant us ease and exit from such a state of affairs, O most merciful of the merciful ones. At the end, Imam uttered his final words, with Allah in the following manner, Sabran Allah qadaik. Grant us patience, O oh Allah, with what you've destined for us. Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord. La ilaha sawak. There's no deity other than you. Ya Ghiyath al Mustaghithin. O one who aids those who seek aid. Ma li arabu sawak. There's no Lord for me but you. There's no worshipped one but you. Sabran Allah Hukmik. Grant patience to us with respect to your decree. Ya Ghiyatha man la Ghiyatha la. Ya Da'iman la Nafada la. O helper of one who has no aid. O eternal one who has no end. Ya Muhiya al Mauta, O reviver of the deceased. Ya Qa'iman ala kulli nafsin bima kasabat. O one who knows of every soul's actions. Oh, kum baini wa bainahu. You judge between me and them. Wa anta khayrul hakimin. You are the best of judges. For if Ismail sacrificed himself to be killed and slain, in the lap of one who had utmost love and mercy over him, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Truly, Ibrahim is one who submits to Allah. But Hussein surrendered himself patiently to die by the sword of his oppressor, one who desecrated Allah's religion. Hussein sacrificed everything that he had. Imam was now drenched in blood, lying lifelessly on the ground. They had finished him off. The horse, though, was still alive, doing tawaf around the holy Imam's body, rubbing its forehead with the blood that was by now covering the whole body. Omar ibn Sa'd saw the scene in utter perplexity. He ordered the soldiers to take hold of this horse and take it back with them. This is of the progeny of the horse of the holy messenger. Grab onto it. The horsemen surrounded the lonely horse. The horse was moving with its hooves violently, galloping against the waves of soldiers standing in its way to such an extent that many of the soldiers and other horses were even killed in the process. Umar ibn Sa'd then ordered the rest to stop. Stop. Let us wait and see what this horse wants to do. They all stopped, waited. What will the horse's next move be? The horse approached Imam Hussein's body again, rubbed its forehead onto the blood that was covering the entire body by now. The horse was rubbing itself and even smelling the body and then neighed loudly. Imam Bakhir has reported that at that time the horse was conveying the following message, oppression and oppression from a nation that killed the grandson of their prophet. Then the horse left towards the direction of the tents. The women observed the horse from the tents, but the horse's head was down as if embarrassed, as if humiliated. 
coming without its rider, coming without its saddle, approaching the tents without its owner. The women ran out, slapping their faces in agony. They exited the tents. They were pulling their hair. They were slapping the sides of their faces, scratching themselves. Saying, what is happening? All this, what's happening to us? And that they were debased and degraded after having all that honor. Then they were approaching the place where Imam was lying. They approached Imam Hussein's body. One was embracing the holy body. The other was rubbing oneself onto his clothes. Another, her face was colored by the Imam's blood. Another was turning the body over. Another kissing the holy body. Another totally in shock as to what has happened. Then all of a sudden, Lady Zainab salam, exclaimed, Wa Muhammad, Wa Abata, Wa Sayyida, O Master, Wa Jafara, Wa Hamzata, Hada Husaynun bil Ara Sarihun bi Karbala. This is Hussein who's fallen under the heat on the plains of Karbala. Then she added, Wa Akha, Wa Sayyida, Wa Ahla Baita, Laita Sama Atbagat Alal Al. I wish the sky's roof would crumble. Wa Laita Al Jabalu Tadaktakat Alasah. If only the mountains would crumble into pieces. She approached Imam Hussein's body, only to see Umar ibn Sa'd with a number of soldiers around him. The Imam was breathing his final breaths. Oh, Umar, she shouted, Abu Abdullah is being killed. You're just watching him. Umar ibn Sa'd started crying, shedding tears on hearing Lady Zainab's words. He then turned away from Lady Zainab. Lady Zainab said, Amo fikum Muslim, isn't there a single Muslim amongst you? Falam yajib ha ahad, no one answered her. Thumma saha ibn Sa'ad bin Nas, then Umar ibn Sa'ad shouted to the people, Unzulu ilay, I descend upon him, wa arihu, finish him off. Fabadara ilayhi shim, shim approached the body. <laughs> he kicked the body around. What jealous Allah sat there, sat on the holy chest of the Imam. What Allah He grabbed onto the beard of the Imam. What that Abba who was safe, if not our He stabbed the Imam with 12 stabs. <laughs> he amputated the mom's head. <laughs> After suffering those days of captivity and returning to Medina, Ummul <laughs> Banin was waiting. She saw Lady Zainal and said, where's Hussein? Lady Zainab said, Abdullah, your son has been martyred. Where's Hussein? She said again. Uthman, Ja'far, your sons have been martyred. Or Molpani said, where's Hussein? Abbas has been martyred. Where's Hussein? He said, Hussein's been martyred. (laughs) 
she almost fainted. She turned around as if she was embarrassed. She cried out to the people, oh people, I don't know what's happened. But Abbas, I know, he would have defended Hussein. They wouldn't have left. They wouldn't have let him do what they did to Hussein in the presence of Abbas. I don't know what's happened, but my guess is they amputated Abbas's arms.